in this video, I am going to show you a little bit of sleight of hand as to how you can edit your Z62 RAW files just like a normal RAW file. G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is spectacular to see you. Now today I want to talk about the Z62 and the difficulties in processing raw files when you buy a camera that has only just been released. Basically it would seem Adobe Capture One and everybody else under the sun, what they do is they wait until they can get real cameras and then they start working on how to put together the profiles, the specifications for any specific camera. So what this means is it can take uh, two, three, four, maybe even as long as six weeks in my experience before you get an official upgrade to either Camera Raw or just to capture one. It'll be a dot release and then there it is. Now that's a long time to wait. You've got a camera. I've got the Z6 II. I've got raw files. I want to use them. So how is it that we use them? So the very first solution is actually provided by Nikon and it is called Capture NXD. It's a difficult name, very hard to remember. I don't remember it from when I use it from one day to the next. Now look, it's not a full blown edit suite. It doesn't have all the things that we're used to in something modern like Capture One version 20 or Lightroom and so on and so forth. It does do perhaps somewhere between 50 and 80% maybe of kind of what we're used to having. But the interface is also quite clunky. It's, it's, it's not the easiest thing to use. But if you only have to use it for the next two to six weeks to get you by and get you processing, well, then that's not too bad. So let's have a quick look at Capture NXD, shall we? Now, before we jump into Capture NXD, I, I, re I reached out to Capture One in order to get a sense of their timing. They always seem to take a couple of weeks and this was their response overnight. This is it right here. Hi there. Currently Capture One does not support the Nikon Z62. Yes, that's why I wrote to you. Thank you very much. Although our R&D department is working to bring support for that camera as soon as possible. Every camera profile carefully is done in-house by our engineers. Good. In our R&D department, and this takes a bit of time as our team is not as big as it might seem. But rest assured that all done with the interest of making the best software we can. I think there's a word missing there. We have introduced this new way of formally requesting camera support. This in an effort to make requests more visible to our product owners so they can prioritize the most requested cameras and speed up support. Please see here. What I would say to everybody is they are going to prioritize who they hear from the most. So if you're a Z6 II owner and you use Capture One, jump onto this link and request it. That way it'll come quicker. So Capture One, um, I think there's a good chance it might come in the Capture 121 update that there's a great deal of advertising about at the moment, which I'll be really disappointed if I have to pay because, come on, this is not a major update in regards to file differences from my perspective. The, the Z6 and the Z6 II are probably not that different. Hmm. Hang around to see how true this is about halfway through this video. They really are not that different anyway so that's capture one basically if you look on the adobe forums they're saying the same thing um they're working on it it's coming soon people say it could be two three four six weeks something like that so let's jump let's jump nxd okay so i already have a this is the downloads from the z62 if we jump to this file here and we look over here at the metadata this is the nikon z62 now i haven't had the camera since january uh this is the incept date i i, I often think when you see 
the first date on any product when you put the date in i think it's the first time they kind of their operating system that this this line of product came to life very much like blade runner anyway it's just simply because i forgot to set the time not because i've had the camera this long so there it is this is the z62 now we can we can go in and we can edit these files let me just move that out of the way so here's the file uh what's the settings on this one 50 of a second uh, now everything looks a little bit soft because we're shooting in 1080p then the screen is at 1080p so we just have to bear with that now in here and I also want to note that the process of filming on the Ninja through the Black Magic makes things a little bit darker and more contrasty than they actually look like. Let's just start at the top here. The things that we have. So you can record your settings. We have control over brightness, EV. So what's interesting about this software is it's kind of replicating a lot of what the actual camera does as opposed to being editing software. There is there is editing you can do, but it's kind of minor compared to what we're used to these days. Control over white balance. So let's say we want to be direct sunlight, which is how I had it set by the look of it. Uh, cloudy. How does that change things? Not that much. It probably was really more this color because it was cloudy. Nikon's built in. In the cameras, you know, they've got all these. So let's let's choose vivid. See what that does. Oh, too much. No, I don't like that at all. Let's try flat, which I think is where I was. Yes, because I shoot flat. Bleached. Living the bleached dream. Binary. Oh, yeah, two colors. Good. Okay, let's just go back to flat. Like that was tons of fun and everything. Landscape. What does that do for us? It doesn't really matter. You're just getting the idea. I'm really just showing you what this software does. We'll go back to flat. In here, we have all of these different things. So noise reduction. Now, people often talk about the fact that the baked the baked in settings in the raw files around lens distortion and so on. Well, you can turn it off and look what happens. It's a very slight change. And also you can control vignetting, vignetting. Oh, what did I do? What happens if we go to zero? So there's zero. It seemed to have been set to 40. But anyway, again, you can turn it off. And, oh, sorry, here, you can turn it off. And it doesn't make that much of a difference. I don't mind either way, to be honest. But people have complained. They have complained that you can't turn this stuff off. You can. You just need to use Nikon software. Okay, what else can you do? Well, you've got curves. Now, I don't know people. I don't know who uses curves and who doesn't, but they're really cool. They're one of the first things I learned when I started using Photoshop. And it actually, they're very powerful and give you a lot of control. They're built in there. You can straighten and so on. Perspective control. So basically, a version of keystoning. A pretty mild version, but still it's in there, which is pretty cool. Uh, sharpening this software is pretty good but then you'll go well how do i how do i saturate how do i do more of that sort of stuff let me let me do it we can turn that there we go how do i do more of those sorts of things and i don't know if you've ever used control points there's some software that use them and they're kind of cool you set the area that you want to adjust and in this case i want it to be the whole the whole image so you just go big and then you can increase the saturation so this is not a bad option for getting you through the next few weeks and being able to work with the raw files. It's just different. And there's a bit of a learning curve. And it's, you know, it's not quite as refined. I suspect it doesn't run quite as fast. But, you know, it runs all right. But, you know, if I want to pull up these shadows here, there's no real way to do that. There is, yes, exposure control. But that's doing it to the whole image. But if you just wanted to bring up this area here, for example, you can do it. You get yourself another control point. You drop it in. You do a bit of a circle in that area you want. It's it's funny because it's a circle, but it's highly feathered. And then you can you know bring it up, and it's pretty subtle. I mean, you can see that 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 and that's working. Happens to work in this case. Anyway, there you go. There you go. I'm pretty excited by all of that. A downside of uh, capture NXD is you only can go to TIFFs and to JPEGs and that from my perspective is um, a little bit limiting but still 
it'll get you through. But here is the crazy part of this story. I did some digging on the internet and I found something that I think is going to excite Z62 owners. Are you ready? Here in the finder are Z62 files. We can't preview them because the operating system does not recognize them. So what we are going to do here is I found a piece of software where we are going to do something a little bit, a little bit magic and magic really is sleight of hand. This little piece of software here called a better finder attributes version seven allows us to change the metadata. So this file here, 155, we cannot preview it. Let's try, drop it into this software. Click on it. Now, if we change here the camera's name, and I've, I've preset this, so it's also got the latest firmware version, even so it's not relevant for this camera. If you look down here, it's version one, of course, but this is where the current cams are up to, the Z6. And if we change this, if we roll this out onto this file, Let's have a look what it's going to do for me. And look at that. Magically, it is now acceptable. So what does this mean? This Z, this which was a Z62 file. It was a Z62 file. It now thinks it's a Z6 file. Can we open it in Lightroom? Can we open it in Lightroom? Let's go to 155, I think it was. Where is it? There it is there. Review for import. And sorry, I don't use Lightroom. So lo and behold, here's a Z62 file pretending to be a Z6. So we have everything that we're normally used to in Lightroom. Although I don't normally use Lightroom, but here it is, a fully editable raw file. Got all the usual stuff. That's not what I want to do. Oh, geez, that's uh, that's fun times right there. And um, let's have a look. Yep, all the regular tools. What does this do for us? Oh, auto cloning. How fun is that? Sorry, never used Lightroom. Not for years. Oh yeah, that's pretty um, that's pretty effective, isn't it? So wait a second, have we got a raw file now that we can use anywhere? Let's jump to Capture One and have a look. We are going to drop this file here into Capture One and see what happens. Oh, it's looking like it's going to import it. Let's have a look, there it is there. Now what, let's... There it is. So, oh, interesting. Look at that. It's actually the software is Nikon Z62 version one. But doing that, calling it a Z6, this has worked and here we are. That's pretty damn cool if you ask me. This is software I'm much more used to. Now, what's quite interesting is every software package, um, they interpret and bring in the files a little bit differently. Let's go back to flat and we'll just give it a bit of color because it's, it's the flat profile. And I like to bring up the shadows. No, I don't in this case. So in this video, we have learned how to use Z62 files in Lightroom, in Photoshop, in Capture One. They're just normal raw files again. And even if it takes your application of choice a couple of weeks to get their act together, you can do it now just with a little bit of effort. It's not that hard. And that piece of software, it's a free download and there's a seven day trial for free. So that is awesome. Well, everybody, I just wanted to share with you as quickly as possible the fact that this is something that you can do if you're a Z62 owner. I think it's super fun and super exciting. A little bit of sleight of hand in order to get the job done. I think that's kind of cool. So please let me know if you've got your Z62 and you're excited by the fact that you're able to do this or perhaps you have another workaround. So please let me know. 
It's so good to see you. Thank you so much for being here today. If this is your first time here, I'd love to see you again. So please subscribe, please share, please like this video because it really helps the channel. And if you'd like to see over 250 episodes right now, just have a look down there. And I'm wanting to get to 20,000 subs by the end of the year. Look, it's a bit of a big ask, but if you could sub, if you haven't, that'd be amazing. All right, see ya. Enjoy your Z6 II raw editing as a sneaky Z6. Bye for now.